We Are the Gardeners by Joanna Gaines and Kids, illustrated by Juliana Swani. We Are the Gardeners. That's a pretty official title, but we didn't start out this way. Just like our garden, we started small and grew from there. Some say that a garden just grows from seeds, but we think it grows from trying and failing and trying again. A garden is hard work, but so is most of the good, important stuff in life. Our family's garden story began with one small pot and fern. Dad stumbled upon it at the hardware store when he ran in for some supplies. He said it was just too cute to leave behind, and he thought it would make mom smile, and it did. We chose a sunny window sill for that pretty little fern. It seemed like a good, safe spot for him to grow. This was back when we were little kids, but we still remember visiting the plant each day to give him a drink, and sometimes we would even whisper to him a bit. And then, plot twist! Out of nowhere, our fern died, dead by overhydration. That's just a fancy way of saying we gave him way too much water. Looking back, each one of us must have watered him every day. That's a lot of drinks for a little plant. By mistake, we love that plant to death. Some people tell themselves they are not good at something after one small failure, but no chance were we going to give up that easily. So we check out some books from the library and we found out that ferns can be tricky and prefer to live in a shady spot. Apparently, a plant's leaves can communicate to us what they are needing. We also learned that most plants have good manners and like to sip, not gulp. Lesson learned. That got us a fresh fern and with it came fresh hope. This time, we set the pot on our piano, way on the other side of the room where the song wouldn't give him so much attention. We made a watering schedule and took turns saying a lot of nice things to our little sprout of a plant. And fern number two lived and thrived and grew. And finally, mom got him a little pot of friend. And then another, and then one or two more. We noticed that talking to our plants actually helped them grow bigger and stronger. So we added some songs and jokes into the mix. Unlike when we overwater, zero plants die from us talking too much. Pretty soon, plants were taking over the house, and Dad said it was time to graduate to outdoor gardening. Mom was as excited about the new outdoor garden as we were, and she started talking about it with a dreamy look in her eyes. That's when Dad called a family meeting so we could come up with a real plan. We all gathered around the kitchen table and got to work dreaming, planning and drawing things out. We knew we needed a sunny spot, a place where the plants could sunbath for at least six hours a day. We would be red as radishes if we did that, but plants just love it. And more than that, they need it. In the garden, there is no life without light. Dad always says that the foundation is the most important thing when it comes to building a house. A house can't be strong if it's built on something weak, and the same holds true in the garden. So to make the foundation of our garden strong, we fill it with something called soil, good soil, which includes a bunch of tiny living things called organisms, can grow things in it. That's pretty amazing when you stop and think about it. A whole hidden world of life is happening beneath our feet. Just because you can see the good things with your eyes doesn't mean they are not there. And another cool thing about soil is that it feeds and strengthens the seeds we sow. And then, like a miracle, plants and flowers burst out of the ground. We also knew we needed our garden to get plenty of water. Rain is the very best thing for plants to drink but it's hard to know when and if rain is coming. So a couple other options to keep plants hydrated are to collect rainwater or use a sprinkler or garden hose to get the job done. Once we had a location with plenty of sun, good soil, and a watering plant, we got right to work. 
First thing first, seeds. The most fun part of planning out our garden was deciding what to plant. We started with the foods we like to eat, like strawberries and tomatoes, and then we chose some pretty flowers to keep them company. The thing about seeds is that they are everyday miracles. Everything a plant will grow up to be is already hidden inside the seed. We chose flowers like zinnias, sunflowers, and cosmos so that pollinators would visit our garden. Butterflies, hummingbirds, and bees spread pollen around from flower to flower, encouraging even more things to bloom. We like knowing that little helpers are out there in nature working with us to help this garden grow. The bees must have put the word out that we had a pretty good thing going because, sure enough, all sort of other critters started to arrive. We quickly found out that there were three types of bugs in our backyard. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's start with the worst part. It was a pretty sad day when the aphids, pronounced aphids, arrived. They are some of the more well-known billions in the gardening world. They suck the life right out of plants. But then the ladybugs show up to eat those pesky aphids for lunch. Ladybugs are for sure part of the hero camp, bravely protecting our plant friends from harm. And we've gotta tell you about earworms. They are like the secret agents of the garden. Earthworms eat all of the dead things, like all roots and leaves, and turn them into life for the soil. Every time we found one, we would all high five and celebrate. They aren't pretty, but who cares? They are awesome, and we love seeing them hard at work. We realized pretty quickly that we need to keep the weeds out. They are the true bullies of the garden. Weeds try to steal water, sunlight, and nutrients from our fruits and veggies, and it's our job to make sure those little rascals don't take over. If we ignore the garden for too long, the weeds run wild and hurt our beloved plants. It's so much easier to do just a little bit every day. We were officially gardeners and had a real life garden to prove it. That garden became our pride and joy. Day in and day out, we tended our plants, making sure they got plenty of sun and water. Every time a new plant had sprouted up from the ground, our excitement grew right along with it. As time passed, our garden grew bigger, and so did our family. When our garden was finally in full bloom and growing tall, we would run through the aisles and watch the butterflies flutter around us. But one day, as we were mid-skip, we noticed some trespassers helping themselves to lunch. And by lunch, we mean half of the garden. Animals may look cute and innocent, but some have a sneaky side. They can wipe out a garden in no time flat. The chickens ate the vegetables, the goats ate mom's roses, and the bunnies weren't picky at all. They ate anything in sight. Saying goodbye to that many happy plants was even harder than throwing away our very first dead fern. We debated if we should give up. Was it really worth it to start all over again? Then we remember one very important detail. We are gardeners. It was a responsibility not only to grow this garden, but also to protect it. So we put a little fence to keep the animals out and got to work rebuilding our garden. It didn't take long to get our plants and flowers growing tall again. To this day, our very favorite days are when we get to gather the fruits of our labor. Mom loves to set the table with pretty flowers in every color you can imagine. We help her dream up recipes for the food we would grow. Sometimes when we see all of that beauty laid out, we can't believe our hands help bring it to life, and it makes all the hard work worth it. It's what keeps us coming back, day after day, season after season. We still keep a little fern on the piano to remind us of our small beginnings. Every time we water it, we remind it not to give up when things don't work out the first time. Because the thing is, whether one pot of fern dies or half of the garden is wiped out by little critters, every failure or setback teaches us something. That says that every hard thing we choose to do makes us braver for the next time. There are so many lessons waiting to be learned and a whole world of gardening ready to bloom. We are gardeners, and you can be too.